So this is Tiffany. She's gonna help us out locating points on the lung channel. So we're gonna start with lung one is level with the first intercostal space, six soon lateral to the midline. So our first question is, how do we find the first intercostal space? And this might be easier to demonstrate on a skeleton. I don't have a skeleton, so we'll put up a picture of a skeleton. So here we have the bones of the chest, and on top is the manubrium, and right below it is the body of the sternum. The place where they come together is the sternomanubrial angle, and this gives us a reference point for the second rib. Above the second rib is the first intercostal space, and below the second rib is the second intercostal space. So you can try to find this on yourself. So this is my jugular notch. The bone right below it is the manubrium. Between my pecs is the body of the sternum. And where these two come together is the sternomanubrial angle. So I take two fingers and put them on either side of the joint, straddling the bump. And then if I come to the outside just a little bit, now I can feel a bone between my fingers. That bone is the second rib. So the top finger is in the first intercostal space, and the bottom finger is in the second intercostal space. So this is a good trick to know, because we're going to need to know how to locate intercostal spaces, not just for the lung channel, but also for the stomach channel, the kidney channel, and points on the REN channel as well. So this gives us a reliable way to locate those intercostal spaces. Back to the model. Here's a manubrium. Here's the sternum, and this is the sternomanubrial angle. So I take two fingers, put it on either side of the sternomanubrial angle, and then if I come out, I can feel a rib between my fingers. This is the second rib, so my top finger is in the first intercostal space, my bottom finger is in the second intercostal space. So we want the first intercostal space, and then we come out six soon to find lung one. And so for this one, we can really just palpate for it, that I'm just sliding out until I come into this divot or this gutter between the chest and the shoulder. So you can just slide out until you fall into it. If we need to measure, what we can do is remember midline to acromion process is eight soon. So here's eight soon, half of eight is four, halfway between four and eight is six, and that gives me lung one. Lung two is directly above lung one, just below the clavicle. So for lung two, we're coming just below the clavicle in the zeroth intercostal space. And so this is kind of in the top of the triangle formed by the clavicle and the deltoid. So here we're coming up in the top of this triangle. If she shrugs her shoulder up, we kind of see this deltopectoral triangle. So that's where we're going for lung two. So we have lung one, and lung two is right above it. So next we're gonna come down to lung five, so that will give us a line. Lung five is on the radial side of the biceps brachii tendon. So here I can feel this tendon at the elbow crease. I'm coming just to the radial side for lung five. And so lung three and lung four are gonna be directly above lung five. Lung three is three soon distal to the axillary fold. So here I have axillary fold to lung five is nine soon. And I divide it into thirds and that gives me three soon for lung three above lung five on the lateral side of the biceps muscle. Lung four is four soon down. So again, axillary fold to cubital crease is nine soon. Divide into thirds, this is three soon, this is six soon. So after this, we can just visually divide it up to three, four, five, six, we want four soon. Lung four is forcing down on the lateral side of the biceps muscle. So after that, we're gonna come down to lung nine to give us a line for the lung channel. So lung nine is at the transverse carpal crease on the radial side. So if you're having trouble with which crease to locate, we can come over to the ulnar side and feel for this bone, the pisiform bone. So come to the proximal border of the pisiform bone, and then lung nine is gonna be level with that on the radial side of the radial artery. So now we have our line from lung five to lung nine. Lung six is seven soon proximal to lung nine. So lung five to lung nine is 12 soon. Half of 12 is six. Halfway between six and 12 is nine. 
And now to find seven, we can just visually divide it into thirds. So here's six, seven, eight, nine. We want seven soon for lung six is seven soon up. Lung seven is one and a half soon proximal to lung nine, but off the line. So the name of this point is Li Chue, which means broken sequence. So that tells us that this point is actually off the line. So if you want to just palpate for it, we can feel the radial styloid process. And then I'm going to come just proximal. And right here, I can feel two tendons underneath my finger. Some people say they feel like fish lips. And we're sticking our needle between the two tendons. So if you want to just palpate for it, find radial styloid process, and then come just proximal to it. If we want to measure, the point is about one and a half soon proximal to the wrist crease. So we can have, here's 12 soon, half of 12 is six, half of, again is three, half of three is one and a half, and then we're coming off the line for lung seven. Lung eight is one soon proximal to lung nine on the line. So lung five to lung nine is 12 soon, half of 12 is six, half of six is three, and then we can just visually divide into thirds. Here's zero, one, two, three, Lung eight is one soon proximal to lung nine on the line from lung five to lung nine. Lung 10 is at the midpoint of the first metacarpal bone. So we can find base of the bone, head of the bone, and come halfway for lung 10. And for this one, we're coming just off the border of the bone. So if you come out here into the thenar eminence, into the belly of the muscle, if you stick a needle in here, it's gonna hurt. So we wanna come next to the bone in the empty space between the muscle and the bone for lung 10. Lung 11 is 0.1 soon from the corner of the nail on the radial side. So we're finding the proximal border and the radial border and where they come together is lung 11. So that is the lung channel.